Hi there, and welcome to a very special Talk Insomnia episode. We have Coach Brittany with us. Welcome back. Yeah, it's, it's good to be back. It's, I feel like it's been a while. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, exactly. Super, super nice you're here. And uh, before we get started, just kind of a heads up to the audience here. We are going to cover three topics that uh, we think are really, really helpful for somebody who is, you know, a mom that is having trouble sleeping. And those are going to be, uh, you know, the fear of having another child, the fear of being pregnant and not being able to take medication, as well as questions around like, how can I be, you know, a good parent with sleep struggles? So that's the heads up. But before we talk about those topics, one of the reasons I really wanted to have you here was that you have actually a new free course available for, for your community. Tell us more about this. Yeah. So I decided to create uh, an email course um, that people can sign up for. And it's specifically geared towards moms because I feel like there wasn't a lot out there um, that specifically targeted moms that are dealing with insomnia because, um, you know, we just have our own, you know, specific struggles and it can be nice to like hear about like, oh, how can someone that's in my my boots actually recover because, you know, moms, you know, they just have little different pressures and different things that they struggle with. And there's always, you know, a little more um, like things to think about with like, oh, am I, if I'm pregnant or if I just had my baby and all these other avenues. So like I decided to create that course. It's a six day course. And if you go to my website, you can sign up for it. Sounds great. We'll, we'll of course put the link to your website in the description. And uh, for those of you who don't know you, uh, like the way I remember your story uh, is that you actually had your first child and then the midwife said something like, you know, it's really important that you sleep. And that's mm -hmm. where it started, right? Yeah. So I was having a little bit of trouble sleeping the first couple of weeks after my baby was born, which I think is very natural. Like it's very big stressor in life to have a baby. Um, and there was just a little more anxiety in my life. Um, so I was, you know, just kind of complaining to my midwife that, yeah, I'm not sleeping very well and the baby's waking up so much, but I'm finding it's hard to even fall back asleep, even when my baby's sleeping. And she's like, well, you really need to be sleeping in order to, you know, get through your day. So you should be sleeping when the baby's sleeping. And then like, I didn't have a ton of pressure before that point, but then I felt like, oh man, I got a lot of, a lot of pressure now to sleep. I need to be doing this. So then after that point, like it, I feel like it escalated a lot. Um, I, I remember, you, you know, that from your story and, you know, for anyone who wants to hear Coach Brittany's entire story, it's right here in on the YouTube channel. You can just search for like talking and saw my Brittany and you'll find it. But but then um, I also remember, if I remember correctly, that when you had your second baby, it was it was very different, right? At that point, you know, there was still the sleep disruption, but mm. not the insomnia component, right? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I definitely went into it. Um, with a completely different approach because I had, you know, just changed my way of um, thinking about sleep and about being awake. And so I didn't have that fear the second time around. Yeah. I still had all this sleep disruptions. My baby was still waking up quite often, um, but I was able to just, you know, accept it and not like allow myself to, you know, get, you know, anxious and worried about what was happening at night. So, and I felt like the experience was, you know, a complete 360 second time around. So it was very nice. Like, I'm not saying I slept eight hours straight though. I definitely wasn't getting great sleep, but the next day I would feel fine because, you know, my experience and just the way I approached it was so much different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, I think you were like, you had graduated from our coaching program and you're sort of kind of getting ready to launch everything. And then you became pregnant again. Right. And, and how was the third time around? Was it kind of similar to the second one? But yeah, very similar. Um, yeah. And so I was, I was a little worried. I'm like, Oh man, I'm going to have two under two. Like I'm definitely not going to be sleeping this time. But, um, yeah, I think I still like was, you know, I was a changed person after the first time around and I, even though there was still like a tiny bit of fear of like, what if it never really um, grew into anything just because I had changed so much and I knew like how to approach it and how to just, um, you know, let go and accept, you know, whatever comes that I never really fell back into that, you know, that struggle of insomnia. And I will say my second two actually were worse sleepers than my first, but you know, that never actually um, affected me because of, you know, how, going through the, you know, the first time around, 
how much um, I was able to learn and how much education I got. And then just the practices I put in to be able to, you know, not um, let, you know, not try to control sleep and not try to do all these things to force sleep. Now I just kind of, I go, I go with the flow now. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Wonderful. And, and so, yeah, I think it's very clear that, you know, a, a lot of, you know, women in your situation in particular have a lot that they can really learn from you. And before we actually go to our questions, um, just want to also announce uh, that, you know, you're, you're now part of the bedtime team. You're, you're, you've gotten a set of clients and uh, we're super excited about that. But how has, how has the first couple of weeks been? Oh, it's been going great. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's been fun to get different types of clients. I'm getting people with all different um, backgrounds and that's super fun. Some of them are moms, which is cool um, to be able to help. And yeah, and I really enjoy, you know, the format of being able to just message people back every day and just help help them along their journey. Yeah, super nice. All right. Well, let's let's jump into it. So um, we picked three questions that we thought could be really, really uh, valuable for the community here to answer. And one of them is this one, which, you know, this is, I've gotten this one actually lately. And it's like somebody realizing they're pregnant and they're like, oh, now I can't take any medication uh, for sleep. And, um, and, you know, you mentioned this is this, you know, this come up in your practice as well. But um, when you have a client that tells you this, what, uh, you know, what are your thoughts? And, and what, what do you teach on uh, when this comes up? Yeah, and I think that can be a very um, common anxiety that people have um, to put like this pressure on themselves to be able to sleep. And then they feel like they like not being able to have this external source, like it actually can create a lot more anxiety. Um, I think if you look at it in a different way, though, that can be helpful because um, not having that medication um, to help you sleep uh, might actually give you more opportunities to work through the fear. Because when you have that medication, it kind of like it helps you. It makes you feel like, oh, this this is something that's going to control my sleep for me. So I don't have to do anything about it. Um, but not, you know, having medication or, you know, anything that external sources to help you sleep gives you a little more opportunity to um, embrace wakefulness, which can be definitely really hard to do. Um, but when we can, you know, allow ourselves to go through that, then it is what helps us to slowly, you know, let that hyperarousal fade. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. And, you know, I was just, as you were talking, I was, I was going to you know, kind of clarify to the audience that, of course, no medical advice here. And, you know, there there cert may certainly be several medications that are uh, uh, approved for pregnancy that will not, that's not something for everyone to discuss with like their prescriber and whatnot, of course. But um, I um, very recently had a guest that uh, here in like, you know, in a Talking Insomnia episode that's going to be released a little bit later who had a, a, you know, a very difficult struggle with insomnia. And for her, actually, the turning point became exactly this, that she became pregnant and she couldn't take her medication. And you know, in retrospect, she was like, that was actually a blessing in disguise because that kind of forced me in a way to, to face what I've been scared of, which is like being awake, not having any kind of safety behavior or safety blanket. And that really led for her to a place where she left the struggle. So it can be really scary, but it can also be really, really helpful, right? Yeah, and definitely. And I feel like, you know, that's kind of how, how I got through my journey too, is, um, you know, the medications, I mean, it was a little different. The medications just weren't working for me. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to ditch this because it's not doing anything. And just helping myself, you know, fa face that fear and do it without any like other like sleep efforts, which medications can be a sleep effort, depending on, you know, which way, how you look at them. And I think, Sometimes just having a little bit of courage can, you know, help you get through it a little more. Yeah. And for you, by the way, was it that when you decided to not take medication anymore, what, were you pregnant at that point or or, or it hadn't, uh, had nothing to do with that? No, I was breastfeeding. So I think the breastfeeding was another factor. I couldn't take a lot of the medications. Um, my doctor said, yeah, most of these you can't take. They gave me a couple of different things that were breastfeeding safe but I didn't find them effective and they, they may have been effective if I like allowed my mind to let them work. <laughs> but I was past that point. I was like, no, no I, I didn't have any hope left of anything helping me. So medications didn't work. Um, 
So I eventually was like, yeah, I'm not taking these if they're not doing anything. But I think that, you know, just not ditching them was helpful for me because I had to continue to embrace the fear even more because I think I still had like a little bit of like, if I take this, I'm going to at least get some sleep. But once I got rid of the medication, I was like, oh, I have to embrace the fear fully now. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's move on to the second one we looked at, which was this one. Uh, I'm scared of having another child after my first momsomnia experience. Um, you mentioned this one comes up quite often. And how do you, um, how, how can one meet this one? Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's a very common fear. Um, when we've gone through something traumatic, which, you know, this insomnia struggle can be very traumatic. We don't want to, you know, have to go through it again. And so, and if it, you experienced it after having your first child or, you know, whatever child you had, um, it can be like it's pretty scary to think, oh, if I have another child, what if I go through this again? But I like to tell people that um, once you've gone through like the education and once you like changed, done like the hard work and changed, like you're a completely different person the second time. You're never going to go through that same struggle again because just how you've already changed. Sure, there might still be some struggle. There might still be, you know, a little bit of like residual fear, but you're never really going to have that, um, you know, it's never going to be like as much struggle and pain as before because just your perception even has changed. And the way that you react to a sleepless night is going to be completely different. And you may still have some nights where like it's like hard, but like it's never going to be like, at that to that point as before um so i don't think anyone that's gone through like you know a big insomnia st struggle and has you know been able to like recover and, and gone through like the you know the real work to, to change has um ever had to ever had the same sort of like struggle and again because you know just how much you you learn throughout the process yeah yeah well said and you know once I mean, again, as you pointed out, it's, it's of course, so natural and understandable that when the initial kind of triggering event, if you will, that was, was kind of the stress around having a child. And of course, it's so natural to have that fear, like, oh, if I become pregnant again, because it, then, you know, will it come back? You know, that, that's a very natural thought. But in, in one way, we can look at it as, you know, there are like a thousands and thousands of things that are stressful in our lives, right? That can cause us some sleep disruption. And when we have kind of learned that, then we can sort of see that there, there's nothing particularly different about this one, you know, pregnancy, motherhood, you know, it, it, there's nothing different from any other thing that can, can be stressful for us. And, and that, you know, can be, can be really helpful because then the fear of it fades, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, well said, um, how about this one? Uh, also, also comes up a lot, uh, a lot. How can I be a good parent when I have these sleep difficulties? Uh, what do you think about this one? Yeah, I think it kind of goes into the idea of not letting sleep like affect the rest of your life. Like if you let give insomnia a lot of control over your life, then it's going to continue to, you know, take over. It's going to feel like, oh, I have all this power. I can take over their life. Um, but in reality, like sleep isn't just, you know, it's nice to have, but it's not um, the golden, you know, little nugget that you need for the, to excel in every aspect of your life. Yeah. And I, remember I had, you know, similar anxieties when I was struggling with my daughter and, you know, I wasn't sleeping at all at night. And I was like, well, how's tomorrow going to go? I'm going to be with my child all day and I'm not going to be so tired. But now that when I look back on it, like I remember just playing with her and I remember, I just remember her laughing and I, I remember all these good memories. I'm like, what, what, what was I worried about? Like, <laughs> like I remember having so much fear every night, like how's my next day going to go? Like, but now I don't have any bad memories. So it's like our brain tells us like these stories that are like so bad, but like they're just stories. Our brain likes to, you know, give us the worst possible you know, outcome, but I don't think sleep is really um, the determinant of like how your next day is going to go or how you're going to parent um, that can, you know, that there's so many other things that play into that. Um, so if you can kind of detach, you know, sleep from, you know, how you're going to be the next day as a parent, then it can be very helpful just 
detach it away from, you know, those thoughts a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So nicely said. And, um, of course, and, and, you know, sometimes these kind of thoughts and ideas can, you know, can come from our own brain, kind of mix it up by itself. But, but oftentimes it's, this is external component because we hear so much about this. Like we hear so much like, oh, you got to sleep. So you, so you rest that you got to sleep. So you're focused, you got to sleep. So you're a good parent, you know, you got to sleep so you can, you know, do, do this and this and that. So you know, there's, there's this external pressure that, that it comes in as well as that. I just, as you were talking, I was just remembering like, when we had our first kid, then it's almost like your world really, really changes. And like the, the sole focus, the only thing you think about is this little child you now have, and you want the very, very best for your little child and protect them and, and be that. And, and so of course, then it can be like, you can be like, oh my gosh, I'm a parent now. And to be a good parent, I have to sleep. So the pressure can be like huge to sleep. But in reality, you can, you know, I, I like to say that you can be like the most wonderful, amazing parent even if you didn't sleep that much, you know, you, you, you can actually still be present. And as you said, like you remember your child laughing and, and even though you had a sleep struggle, so just knowing that can take so much pressure off. So, um, yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. And I will say, I think it's important to be a little more gentle with yourself too, because you can, it can be very common to put pressure on yourself to do like everything that you wouldn't normally do and like be this perfect person. But, you know, some days, you know, are going to be tough and you can, it's okay to like, you know, take a step back and just do what, you know, feels, get, feel, makes you feel at ease that day. And so it might be like, yeah, I'm just going to play with my child, you know, in the living room as opposed to take them to this big water park. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. But, and that's okay. Like just trying to be a little more kind and gentle your, to yourself throughout the process and realize, you know, you're the parent that that child needs in the moment, no matter how much you slept. Yeah, yeah. So, so like I said, and you know, a little uh, kind of a little side trip from the specific kind of like mom's family topic here. But you know, a lot of what a lot of people say also is like, I, I feel I'm, I'm not, I'm not a good partner or friend or something like that because I'm, I guess I am so I snap so easily or I, I get mad and I'm not able to like listen to other people, present with other people, and and you know, of course we all want to be, you know, a, a good friend, a good partner, etc. But it can be difficult when we are scared and or angry or or, or, or in not in not in a nice emotional space, right? And mm -hmm. where I'm going with this is to say that it's not really like the 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 little sleep. Like we we can have sh a sleep little, and if we're not like scared about that or angry about that, then we can actually still be present and listen to people, right? And mm -hmm. that can be helpful because if we think like, oh, I just have to sleep more hours so I can be a, a you know, a pleasant person and a, a caring person, then in it increases the pressure to sleep. But when we see that oh, it's not about the sleep, it's how I react to it, it's how I think about it. That makes me kind of scared. So I'm not really able to be present and 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 uh, caring like I like to. That that changes the perspective and it decreases the pressure to sleep. So that just came to my mind. But uh, do, do you see it similarly? Yeah, definitely. I think you know, a lot of this journey is really all about our reactions. Um, yeah, you can definitely change, you know, you can sleep very little and still like have a great day the next day. And like, you know, have a, your mood can be completely different just depending on how you react, react to it. Like think if you went like on a vacation to like Hawaii and you took a red eye the whole night, you're like, I didn't sleep at all, but you get to Hawaii and you have a blast, your kids are playing on the beach, like you, you get the sun and like, you're probably gonna be in a great mood. But so like, I don't think sleep is the, the issue. I think it's how we react to it. Yeah, super well said. All right. Well, we'll let's conclude there. And again, for everyone, um, Coach Brittany has a, a new free course. So head over to the website and sign up for it if that is something you're interested in. And uh, look forward to having you back real soon, Brittany. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.